when I was little, I would always see the UFC gloves, and I always wanted some. This gets me pumped up for Saturday night. Raul Rosas Jr. hasn't spent a long time on our screens, but his name has already been written into the UFC history books after his promotional debut at UFC 282. As the youngest fighter to have ever laced up gloves and fought in that iconic octagon, Rosas Jr., at the age of 18, is achieving a dream that most seasoned veterans never even get a chance at. But beyond his age, is there truly anything there to make Rosas Jr. one of the most exciting prospects in the sport? Well, let's take a dive into this celebrated rising talent's career and find out. Born in the small town of Clovis, New Mexico, Rosas' family made the decision to move to Santa Rosa, California just so their son's prodigy-level talent for fighting could get a better shot at being noticed. An unbeaten amateur run persuaded the Athletic Commission to make an exception and grant this 17-year-old a professional license to fight. To make your pro debut at the age of just 17, and barely 17 at that, you'd forgive this young fighter for showing some nerves early on. I mean, it certainly takes a lot to sign on the dotted line for a cage when you're not even legally considered an adult. Well, as it turns out, Rosas wasn't worried at all about the occasion. Or at least, that's how it seemed as he made his cage walk. Raul seemed pumped up as he finally made his debut, walking to the ring with an air of confidence that seemed beyond his age. And in the fight itself, Rosas' physicality allowed him to drag his opponent to the mat immediately taking the back before finding his way to an easy rear naked choke finish. And if you thought his first fight was quick, well, he managed to outdo himself in his second, scoring a sub-minute armbar to move to a perfect 2-0. It was already clear that this dude had a natural talent for wrestling and grappling, and it was obvious to see that he was ready for a step up in competition. But his shot at the big time would not come around just yet. No, Rosas would be forced to put in his work on the regional scene before the big dogs came a-knockin'. Fight 3 in his career would see Rosas once again prove himself to be an adept finisher on the mat, using his back control to shift his opponent around before switching to an armbar. This was a very slick finish, folks. And around this time, Rosas was starting to generate some minor buzz among the hardcores of this sport. A pair of finishes in his final two fights on the regional scene would leave his pro record at 5-0, enough for Dana White and his team to make a real push to get this guy under the bright lights of the UFC. This is where Rosas Jr.'s first major step up in competition would come, and it was then that the first really major MMA headlines that Rosas Jr. generated came around. A 17-year-old with only 10 months of fight experience under his belt was about to get a fight on one of the biggest proving grounds in the sport. Rosas was signed for a Dana White's Contender Series matchup against Mondo Gutierrez. At the time, and, and what a war, what a technical fight it was. Um, both guys pushed themselves as hard as they could. And for a 17-year-old to conduct himself the way he did in this fight, um, I was blown away by it. A 7-1 prospect who would, without question, offer him the most dangerous test of his career to date. In fact, up until this point, the most experienced fighter Raul had ever fought had only competed two times as a pro. But this is to be expected when you're a young fighter like him. Taking things at a measured pace could be the difference between a future world champion and whatever the hell the UFC messed up with when it came to Sage Northcutt. And for Rosas, he was about to get some valuable in-cage experience. Sure, this next fight took a lot longer than any of his previous efforts, but it's not like Rosas showed any true nerves in there. In fact, he threw a spinning back kick within the opening minute before using the chaos that followed as a route towards the takedown. He even tried an incredibly rare Suloev stretch, which you might know as the sub scored by Aljamain Sterling and Zabit Magomed Sharipov on the same night. And this faked flying knee into a takedown? A really pretty effort from this 17-year-old. In the end, the clear judge's decision went the way of this rising prospect. And if there's one takeaway that you could really get from this whole thing, it was that Rosas Jr. was totally fearless in there. Indeed, his general striking needed some work. 
but between the ages of 17 and 25, fighters can be expected to make substantial leaps in short amounts of time. This guy won't be 30 years old until October of the year 2034. A crazy thought, isn't it? Well, Dana White and the UFC had obviously seen enough to give him a shot, and in doing so, as soon as he placed his signature on that UFC contract, he became the youngest fighter to have ever signed for the promotion. The questions over Rosas Jr. weren't so much over his potential, but over what he would be able to handle at this young age. It was clear that his wrestling and grappling skills were very good, but what would happen when he came up against someone who didn't allow him to score the takedown? How would Rosas look when his striking was pushed to the forefront? Well, a lot of fans were hoping that Jay Perrin would be the man to ask these questions of this young talent. In the pre-fight build-up, he promised the world that he would not lose to some child, even saying it directly to Rosas' face, telling him he wouldn't land a single takedown. Well, as it turned out, he was very wrong on that front. In some ways, it was the perfect debut for Rosas. He didn't exactly get a long, drawn-out introduction to the UFC, but in the three or so minutes he spent inside the cage, we got to see his immense physicality for the division, his expert back takes, and of course, the rear naked choke submission that is slowly becoming his signature. It was clear that Rosas was ready for the UFC. The question now is just how quickly the promotion want to move him along. Rosas himself is an incredibly active fighter, having gone 7-0 in just over a year of competition. And when you're that hungry for cage time, you can only be shielded from the major threats of your division for so long. Well, as it turns out, the UFC have made their move, placing Rosas Jr. on the upcoming UFC 287 card, the one headlined by Alex Pereira and Israel Adesanya. And for the matchup itself, they have opted for a clash with the 8-1 Christian Rodriguez, an inform opponent who should serve as Rosas' most interesting challenge to date. Rodriguez is skilled on both the feet and the mat, a 25-year-old bantamweight prospect who has his own sights set on former glory. And while he is indeed seven years older than Rosas, he should serve as the perfect matchup and litmus test for Raul's current levels. All we can say for certain at this point is that Rosas has all the time in the world to make good on his potential. And given his age, he could take a few years of fighting low to mid-level guys while he rounds out his game. It is hard to know how the UFC are going to progress him, especially when you consider just how stacked 135 pounds is right now. But either way, this 18-year-old's journey is going to be very, very interesting. If you enjoyed watching the rise of Raul Rosas Jr., we'd like to recommend another video that we think you'll enjoy. Check out the rise of Hamzat Shemaev, the most feared welterweight in the UFC, 100%. So be sure to click the link on your screen. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.